Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Endymion. Uh, now, any returning viewers who have been around here for any period of time are probably looking at the camera thinking, what the hell happened? Uh, if you missed the stream, then I don't know what to tell you. It happened. We're just here now. This is just what we're living with. Good thing or a bad thing? You tell me, I guess. Not that I care. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be talking about Endymion today. Uh, now, this is not a deck profile by any means or description because I've been actively working on and changing about the deck. Uh, this is more of a idea, it's just sort of floating it out there uh, to sort of people, not only to give people a rough idea of sort of like what to play, how to play, uh, but also to sort of put the the invitation and the invite out there to other people who want to sort of pick it up, potentially join in, help out with tutorials or whatever it is. This is basically just me having a bit of fun testing it out. Uh, I did want to share the learning process a little bit because it's a very difficult deck to learn. So this isn't like a, an end-all be-all gate, but this is more so just an insight into the learning journey of Endymion. Now there are quite a number of cards that you sort of maybe do want to play, maybe don't want to play. Uh, like you saw, we were messing around with some instant and ready fusion targets. We ended up cutting that. It was a little bit too much. Uh, we'll probably fill up the extra deck with more generic link monsters. Uh, we were playing around with Magician Souls, Dark Magician for next year uh, level 7 on board. I kind of like the idea, but it hasn't been playing around too much. So we're, we're just messing around right now. We're just sort of seeing what happens. If you guys have any good builds, any good decks, any good guys, whatever it is, you want to fire them my way, feel free to hop into the Discord below. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't been around before, feel free to subscribe. You know, you might as well. I put out content every single day uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, so you'll be getting something new every single day, be it a deck profile, be it a uh, competitive duel, be it duel, duel room content, be it whatever, right? You'll get something new every day, so you might as well. It doesn't cost you anything. And like I said, if you have any useful hints, trips, ticks, uh, tricks, questions, whatever, uh, anything you want, hop into the Discord below. You can get in, you can chatting me, chatting to anybody else. We are so close to 100 Discord members, which is really cool. I think we're at like 96 at the time of recording. Uh, by the time you see this, it's going to be a few days after. So we might actually already be at 100. You might be the 100th. Join now, you might be, you might be the 100th, who knows. Uh, but either way, let's get into the replays. I feel like I should clarify that all of this testing is being done at the, at the diamond level. So, you know, this isn't like casual or, or rookie testing. This is diamond level, uh, the diamond tier we're in. So we're going to open up with a few cards here. Basically, the idea behind the deck, I'm going to very quickly cover this now, is you have a bunch of cards in your deck that gather spell counters every time you use a spell card, right? So one of these little things here, it's a spell counter. Uh, and what you basically want to do is you want to gather as many spell counters as quickly as you possibly can so you can start using the powerful effect of your monsters which require you to pay spell counters as cost. So basically we're just using some quick spell cards to draw a bunch of cards and they'll gather a bunch of counters. We're going to use Endymion here. Uh, we're going to activate Endymion's... Uh, well, I, oh, sorry, upon being act activated Endymion gets us another counter. Then we're going to Pendulum Summon out. Because our opponent used Max C, we're deciding, you know what, we're not going to go nuts this turn. We do have Chaos Hunter, which we were playing initially in the deck. And I kind of liked it. I'm probably going to put it back in. I actually really liked Chaos Hunter. Uh, and we're just going to leave it there. You know, we're just going to sit on this. Hopefully then they won't be able to out our board completely. Uh, having the Chaos Hunter against Adam Ancipators does mean no Block Dragon. So the Researcher doesn't hit anything. That's fine. They do have Seeker revealing the Royal Doki Doki. Beautiful card. Uh, they're going to go with Roxy's though, they're going to link Roxy's off into the cat. Then they're going to special summon out Researcher, I guess. They've already used its effect though, they're going to link to in the IP Mascarina. Then they're going to use Mascarina and their uh, cat to go into Unicorn. I guess without the ability to go into the Block Dragon, they're sort of limited in what they can do. They are going to finally get rid of our uh, Chaos Hunter, but they've sort of left a little bit too late to take out too much of our board. They are going to destroy our Abductor and they are going to destroy our Reflection. Now, whenever a card with spell counters on it is destroyed, your Magical Citadel of Endymion will basically steal all of those spell counters to itself, so at least they don't go to waste. They can also give up a spell counter to protect itself, right? Uh, and this is where we're going to show off one of the powerful abilities of Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic. Really, really brutally powerful card. It's just a bit expensive to use. You can remove six spell counters to special summon it out to the field, and then destroy cards on the field, up to the number of different cards on the field which can hold a spell counter, which in this case is two, right? So we would have been able to pop two cards. Uh, and this resolves, this destruction effect resolves while it's still technically a spell, which means even if your opponent has skill drain, if your opponent has any floodgates, anything like that, 
this effect will wipe them out before Endymion even technically counts as a monster, which is real handy. It, uh, it also has a spell counter, has a secondary effect where you can bounce a card that has a spell counter on it back to your hand and negate the activation of a spell or trap card, which is pretty dope. Our opponent, again, they just don't have anything in hand here. They're going to set a card. They open up with the double max C against us, but we don't really care. We're going to go the spell power master. We're going to grab Servant of Endymion. Uh, and I think at this point, our opponent isn't much longer for this game. They're going to go Droll and Lockward. We let that resolve because we really don't care. We're going to use Servant of Endymion. This card also has another useful effect where instead of a card needing to remove materials from itself to use its effect, you can just remove them from this instead. So think of this, think of the, the Citadel as sort of like a bank for your spell counters. So we're going to use Servant's Effect, which will summon itself out, as well as another monster you can put a spell counter on. We summon out our Mythical Beast Jackal. Our opponent realizes at this point we have a monster negate with the Jackal, we have a spell trap negate with the Endymion. There's no way they're going to gather enough advantage to play through those negates with the amount of turns they have left. So they decide just to scoop it up. So that was a win for us. Again, playing through double maxi, playing through an access code talker. Oh, that's pretty dope. You know, it wasn't exactly ideal at Emancipators, but I still think us being able to play through multiple maxi and uh, at least their their access code plays was really damn good. I'm not too upset about that. Uh, so that's game number one. Let's get into game two. Alrighty, getting into game two here. We are going second now. Endymion's effect itself is actually pretty damn powerful going second, so it's not as if you don't have any options, but our opponent's got a bit of a funky deck here, dropping a Lava Golem in order to search their deck for the Ace Bell. Ace Bell grabs Glass Bell directly from the deck. Uh, both of them will activate their effects. Chain Link 2, I think the Ace Bell just deals some damage. Yep, Glass Bell then grabs them another Ace Bell directly from their deck. Uh, they're going to activate the Snowbell, so they would have grabbed the Snowbell if they didn't already have it, but I guess they did. They're going to go into their Wind Pegasus, just so they can basically level themselves up into the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. And this card also gains additional protections based upon the monsters that were used for its summon. Uh, yeah, so because the Snowbell was used for its summon, it can't be destroyed by card effects. That's pretty nutty. Uh, that makes life very difficult. I don't know if these two... Oh, the Attic Nista was used for its summon. It wasn't even the other two. Yeah, so it's just protected from card effect destruction, which is already a bit of a problem considering you can't really out it by battle, and it also has a built-in monster to get. Like, you can think of this card right now as sort of being Avramax on steroids. Uh, they're also going to bring out the, invoice, the Invoked Region, which is unironically a counter to this deck, right? This, this card hard counters our deck, which is like really weird we're gonna go magician souls we're gonna dump a jackal at this stage we weren't playing dark magician it was actually this game that inspired me to start playing dark magician uh i don't know if it would have been beneficial though we're gonna go and demi on here we're just trying to stack counters on our jackal to force him to use his rage in effects this is why it's a counter because he can literally just flip us face down because we're not face down all of those spell counters disappear we decided to just hope for the best here drawing a card off of our souls we're gonna go into beyond the pendulum uh, beyond the pendulum here gets negated by the crystal wing. We sort of knew it would, uh, but we didn't, again, we literally didn't have any other place, like at all, zero, zilch. Uh, and if we were forced to just end turn here, uh, we were just trying to see if we could make something happen. We unfortunately couldn't. That flipping us face down thing by itself was enough to completely ruin our turn. I'm just going to speed it up. Typical invoked plans. They're going to go into Magista so they can then go into Macabre. So we're up against the invoked Macabre here, which again is pretty typical invoked going to add back the invoker to their hand here so they can give themselves a 1000 attack point boost should they need it they're going to wipe out our jackal wipe out the bird and hit us in the face for 3k they're going to end their turn we've got 3300 life points left i don't think there's a single card we can top deck that would make this worth it ready fusion is definitely not one of them this is the game that also convinced me to take ready fusion and instant fusion out of the deck so you know it's a it's a two-way street i suppose and we just scoop it up uh, there was nothing we could possibly have done. I wasn't out here to waste my time. So, I mean, th that's just it. What I've noticed is the... Really, depending on your hand, the deck doesn't play through interruptions very well. So, I feel like maybe playing it... Playing a few going second cards is going to be helpful. Maybe some Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is sort of counterintuitive, though. Maybe Dark Ruler no more. Tactics? Is tactics a good idea? I mean, maybe Triple Tactics may be the better one, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't have that card right now, <laughs> but that may be the direction we need to go in. And the whole point of this video is learning, right? So games like this are sort of making me think that, okay, maybe we need a little bit more heat for going second. Maybe we need some Dark Ruler. Maybe we need some Triple Tactics talent. I feel like those are going to be some pretty solid investments. So we may look at that in the near future. But for now, 
let's get into game number three. Already getting into the third replay here. This is a pretty decent enough hand here. Uh, we're going to be able to lock down our opponent nice and tight here. We're going to use Cerberus Effect here. It's going to grab us our Jackal. Uh, we're going to go Abductor just so we have a way on field of gathering more spell counters as we're searching for our Citadel, which is awesome. So now we've got the Citadel and our Jackal already has three counters. So we're able to just remove all three to tribute it to summon out the Jackal King directly from our deck. Then we're just going to drop the... Uh, we're going to drop the... Citadel because the secret village spellcasters is pretty busted uh, and then our abductor is going to grab us an endemion I didn't really know what to grab here in this situation I didn't real I knew I sort of didn't have the gas to extend any further so I just activated it and I'm pretty sure we just passed turn here yeah we do but what does this board actually do well this isn't again it's not broken but it's ter it's definitely not terrible either because our opponent unless they're playing spellcasters which there's not a lot of great spellcasters right now um, they can't play spell cards at all. They cannot play spell cards. That means no runic, no sprite starter. That means no pot of desire, extravagance, etc. That means all of those big spell cards that you're afraid of, uh, especially going first, completely stop. Can't even activate them. Can't even attempt to activate them. Uh, and then we have our Jackal King, which can remove two spell counters from, a, from itself to negate the activation of a monster and destroy it, which is pretty handy. So we've got a monster negate and our opponent cannot activate spells, which is pretty solid. I'm pretty sure our opponent just doesn't even attempt. Uh, they draw a card and I'm pretty sure they'd scoop it up. Yeah, they do. There you go, completely locked down. Couldn't play the game. It is what it is. Uh, and that's, I did want to briefly show that off, the wee interaction there with Secret Village, because all of your monsters are spellcasters, even though the beasts look like beasts. They're not, they're spellcasters. So it works with the Secret Village. That's a pretty decent lockdown. It's a bit, it sort of slows the deck down a little bit. So I don't know if everyone's playing that. I know for a fact that I, I do want to keep it in because it is pretty damn powerful. Considering if you look at the top strategies right now, you're looking at Branded, which need their Branded Fusion. You're looking at Sprite, which need their Starter, which needs their Smasher. You're looking at Runic, which needs their entire deck, which automatically gets shut down. Uh, you're looking at Sword Soul, which isn't like the worst. They don't get hurt by it too badly, but they like their Emergence, right? They, they would like to play Emergence. So there's a bunch of the top decks in the meta right now that really don't like this card. And then every deck doesn't like their Small World getting negated. Doesn't like their Forbidden Droplet. Doesn't like their um, Pot of Desires, Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Duality. The Floundery's Field Spell gets negated. Uh, their continuous spell gets negated so like 100 there's definitely a really really high impact card right now so i feel like if you're going to be playing a spellcaster based deck of, of any major description this is definitely a card you want to be putting in there okay getting into our final game here uh we are going second and our opponent's playing runic which not a good time uh, i feel like Playing a deck like this, it might honestly be best to bump up the number of villages we're playing, right? Because in this situation right here, we could auto win this just by playing village. Except we can't because this guy's actually playing Psy Frame Gear Delta, which really annoyed me because who the hell plays Delta? What even is that? Okay, so uh, it, we get Delta, I guess. That's a, that's a thing that happened, I suppose. Uh, we're going to go our Magister just to put something on our board that can generate spell counters. We're going to try to use Into the Void. We're going to get negated. Uh, and that sort of puts a dampener on our whole plan. We are going to activate our Jackal King to get us more counters, and we are able to Pendulum Summon out our Endymion as well as our Jackal. We decide we're going to try and combo off just a little bit. We go into Electromite. Electromite is going to get hit by Runic Freezing Curses. Uh, so, big sad moment, big sad. Uh, so that's not great for us. Electromite gets negated. That really does sort of grind our players to a halt. We almost would have been better just keeping Endymion and... The Jackal on the board, right? We're going to detach three here. We're going to resummon Endymion alongside our Magister to the field. Each of them getting a, uh, a spell counter, which means we have we have a negate, right? We have a negate. We're going to take out his monster. We're going to take out his other monster. We're going to attack him directly. Normally, you don't want to do that. You would rather just wait to the end phase so the driver gets banished. But we just want we just needed to get aggressive. You can't really sit around and wait with Runic because they will just continue to out-resource you like crazy. Here, we make a mistake. Uh, what I should have done is I should have used uh, Endymion to negate and destroy the Runic Fountain. 
I didn't do that. I instead activated Magister and sort of chain blocked myself, which was pretty stupid of me. I get it. Uh, I believe it just puts itself back in the Pendulum Zone and then gives itself its spell counters back, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. He's going to go Freeze and Curses here. Uh, we're going to negate it. Or no, sorry, Runic Destruction. We're going to negate it with Endymion uh, just to hopefully stop him from activating his Fountain again, but I believe he has another Runic spell. Um... He's got Sprite Starter, so he does. Sprite Starter, oh yes, no, from here he doesn't have any more Runic cards, he just starts playing his Sprite Package. We grab Mythical Institution here off the top of our deck, thanks to Electromite. Electromite, once per turn, lets you draw a card once one of your cards are destroyed in the Pendulum Zone, uh, or sorry, leaves the field, which applies to more than just its own effect, right? Uh, he's going to go Sprite Carrot, giving himself a Spell or Trap card negate, which is, of course, rather detrimental. Gigantic Sprite Ditching Material to summon Epira. Epira drawing a card, then Link summoning off into Sprite Elf, which is basically a monster reborn on wheels, and Roy's being a quick effect usable on both players' turn. He's going to go Sprite Smasher now, banishing our Endymion, which is a bit of a problem, but none of his monsters are big enough to get over Electromite, which is the funniest thing about sprites, right? Because their deck is so powerful, and then you summon an 1800 beater, and they're like, ah, well, hmm. <laughs> Luster Dragon counters Sprite. Absolutely crazy. Uh, no, that one's got uh, that one's got 1900 defense. Sorry, we're gonna need that. We're gonna need the gene warped werewolf to take care of that one. Uh, our magister's gonna get destroyed. We're going to draw another card. Except no, we're not. We're gonna get negated by freezing curses. And I'm pretty sure we realize very very quickly here that we're not gonna win this game. Uh, so our electromite gets negated. We try to go into the battle phase here. He is gonna draw two more cards. Runic fountain is just disgusting. Uh, they are going to negate us from being able to attack, which is, you know, it's not exactly fine, but what are we going to do about it? And I'm pretty sure we don't stick around for much longer after this. Uh, they go Rageki, destroy our Electromite, just insult to injury, I swear to God. They're going to bring back Sprite Blue. Sprite Blue grabs Jet, and the whole thing starts again, grabbing the Sprite Starter, activating Starter to grab the Red, going into Gigantic Sprite, and Gigantic Sprite grabbing them Cap Shell. Uh, before going into number 45, and at this point, I think we call it. Yeah, we do. No, again, there's no way we could win that. that. And the thing about this deck as well is there's not really any good cards you can rip off the top of your deck, right? There's nothing you can just pull into where you're just like, mm, this card can win me the game. This can turn around a losing battle. Um, which is something I think most decks sort of need nowadays, or at least a card like in combination with one other card to do that. But with, with this... You sort of need to set up with your first hand, otherwise trying to generate enough spell counters to make any play is damn near impossible. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, it's pretty damn difficult. Ghost Ogre being super popular right now, Veiler and Imperm always shutting you down with your monsters, Ash Blossom of course being a problem, it's just problematic. I'm going to be honest, it's just a problem. Uh, like I said, this is a learning video. Uh, I am going to throw the deck list briefly on screen, but we're not doing a profile or anything like that because it's not finished. So let's have a look at least at what the deck list is. So this is uh, this is kind of kind of sort of the deck list we landed on. Uh, it's definitely not perfect. Of course, there's, I'm constantly changing things in it. Again, this is by no means a deck profile, right? That's not what we're doing here today. I just wanted to show off a couple of replays, some of the potential, some of the plays, maybe some of the bad cards that I think maybe shouldn't go in, as well as some ideas about some good cards that could go in. Uh, you guys can look at this list, you can tell me if I'm missing anything huge, or if I'm misplaying massively, or if in general I'm an idiot. Um, you can sort of, you can share that in the comments below, or if you want it to be more useful, you could jump into the Discord and share it in the Endymion channel. Just, you know, put up a deck list, put up some suggestions, some requirements, um, I don't know, whatever you want to do, it's up to you at the end of the day. But this is how we're playing it, I'm going to continue to test and develop and improve the deck list as we're going along, so expect more content on this deck. It is definitely a pretty fun one, uh, I haven't had much experience playing it in the number of years it's been since the original structure deck came out in the TCG, which is when I last played this deck, so quite a while ago. Uh, so I will be continuing to improve of it, but yes, that is today's video. If you have any questions, or, or I think last, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Uh, or if you just want to see more content like this, or if you want to see a sort of a deck profiles where we, we play a deck we're more experienced with, we fully break everything down, talk about them card for card. Maybe you want to catch our live streams when we're playing, uh, playing in Ranked Live, we're playing in Events Live, or we're playing Duel Rooms, which happens every single stream, and we're doing viewer games if you want to hop in, interested in anything like that. Again, that button is just down below. All you need to do is subscribe, and you'll get those notifications, and you can join in anytime you want. 
And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.